Sorry to disappoint you, I wasn't shot with a real pointy arrow. I'm still alive and well and shall continue to haunt the interwebs. It looked pretty real though, didn't it? The padded tip struck right underneath the bib of the fencing mask, which then covered it and got it stuck. Before we get to the action, there is something to point out. This is not a scientific experiment and is not intended to prove anything. It's merely a challenge that I wanted to try out of curiosity and for your entertainment. I will give you my conclusion later, but don't take it as any more than an opinion based on personal experience. There is some 960 FPS slow motion footage, but I decided to put it at the end of the video because it has a horrible flickering effect due to the lights in that room. You may still find it interesting, but I'll put an actual epilepsy warning before it. Yeah, it's that bad. Our local HEMA instructor offered to help with this test. Thanks, Eric. Thanks for gleefully shooting at me, you bastard. Seriously though, it was all in good fun. I took three of my arrows whose tips had snapped clean off, filed them smooth and covered them with tape, a 5 cent coin, dense closed cell foam, soft foam and a layer of cloth. The bow used is Kara's 45 pound Scythian horse bow made by Grozer in Hungary. Three, two, one. one. What struck me immediately, aside from the arrow, is just how difficult it is to get the timing right. Moving quickly alone doesn't do it. There is enough time to strike, but it's extremely hard to judge the distance of the arrow as it's flying in a straight line at my face. One. Three, two, one. <laughs> one. One thing I really underestimated is how much the natural flinching reflex gets in the way. I tried to focus on the form and keep my movements clean and controlled, but having an arrow in my face made that extremely challenging. You can see how my head jerks and my footwork suffers from the oh crap response. Three, two, one. one. This one was really close. If I had sidestepped in the opposite direction, I would have gotten it. By the way, it's dramatically easier to dodge an arrow than it is to try to cut it out of the air. And you can tell that when sidestepping, my form is less wonky because I'm more confident. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. One. This is the arrow with the least padding. Yep, it hurt. Three, two, one. One. Here I anticipated too much when trying to get the timing right. I moved too soon. Three, two, one. Almost. Didn't get it straight on, but made enough contact to deflect it so that the arrow shaft hit me and not the point. Three, two. One. Nice! One. Finally. It took a lot of attempts. I included most of them in the video, with the exception of two or three missed shots and three failed attempts, which just didn't look good. Three, two, one. That one broke. <laughs> I kid you not, these two clips are in order. I really got it twice in a row. I did get better, but keep in mind, this was in response to a fixed pattern. If I was suddenly shot at by an arrow without knowing exactly when it would be released, that would be significantly more difficult. Three, two, one. <laughs> one. Three, two, one. Nicely done. One. Here I figured might as well strike it with the blunt spine of the blade because it would actually be better to knock it aside rather than cut it because if you cut it cleanly in half the point might still keep going for you. Three, two, one. one. Three, two, one. one. Again, horrible flinching. Three, two, one. What? Oh. <laughs> Three, two, one. Nice dodge. What? Three, 
two, one. It's done. One. For this one I tried to parry rather than strike it, which might be more effective, but unfortunately that was the last arrow at that time, the other two had already broken, and now that one went too, so that was the end of the test. Okay, on to the conclusion. I'm going to show the slow-mo footage now, so if you have problems with strongly flickering video, you might want to open another tab and only listen to the audio. So, is it possible to reliably cut an arrow out of the air if you don't have superhuman senses and reaction time? Maybe. I've seen some extraordinary physical performances. However, you need to keep in mind that the velocities of these arrows is limited. The draw weight of the bow is only 45 pounds, whereas war bows tend to be at 80 pounds and up, some even at 120 and more. And the padding makes the arrow both heavier and less aerodynamic. Plus, I saw the bow being drawn and got a signal. If the archer releases without warning, it would be incredibly hard. Well. Let us know what you think. I hope you enjoyed this little test and thanks for watching.